Long golden locks cascade over her creamy white shoulders as she carefully combs her hair upon a rock by the water's edge. Her soft song is carried on the salty air, rigging through the fjords and up the mountain lakes and streams. The mad folk are elusive and mysterious creatures in Nordic folk belief, often said to live both in the sea as well as inland lakes and mountain waters. The mermaid is known as the Havdua, or the Ocean Woman, and she is said to be incredibly beautiful, with a human upper body and long blonde hair, and a fishtail on her lower half. The merman, on the other hand, is known as Havmana, meaning the Ocean Man. He is said to have long and thin hair that falls over broad shoulders, a wild beard, the lower body of a fish, and interestingly, some accounts tell that he has no arms. Seeing him is said to be an omen that bad weather was on its way. It was said that a fisherman or fishermen that helped a merman would be rewarded by him giving them fishing advice or directions. And should one be lucky enough to speak with him, he was often told as only speaking in rhymes. Similarly, should a man help a mermaid in some way, he would be able to ask her three questions any answer that he desired. However, she would be quick to become irritated if his questions were silly or stupid, and she would promptly leave if annoyed. A tale from inland Norway tells of a farmer who was out hunting one day in an area known as Flokstjuna. When he was travelling past a large lake known as Fudusjoen, he spotted a mermaid who sat by a waterfall and combed her hair. He drew up his rifle and took some shots at her, and in a fright she jumped back into the lake, and he heard her cry. Farewell, flock and voodoo show, and finchonin too. No man at Lena will successful be until the first nine have suffered. It is said that for nine generations, the farmer's family lived in poverty, and their crops and animals died and were sickly, all thanks to the mermaid's curse. Another variant of the merman is the madmal, an ocean spirit much smaller than a human, with a man or boy's upper body and the lower half of a fish. It is said that this creature can see into and predict the future, as well as reveal hidden treasures or objects. Should a fisherman pull up the naked, freezing Mardmel on their hook and show him kindness by offering warm clothes or blankets, and then releasing him, the Mardmel would warn them of any dangers or bad weather. Should they treat him badly, however, he would seek revenge. The mermaid, too, has another variant within Nordic folklore. 
the terrible creature known as the Margiga. Similarly to the mermaid, she has the lower part of a fish and the upper body of a woman. However, unlike the beautiful mermaid, she is instead said to have a hideous, elongated face and large eyes like a horse. Her ears stick out from her head like those of a wild mare, tattered and torn. An account from the Kongisbele, or the King's Mirror, a document from the 1200s, tells of her having large nipples, long hands, and wavy hair, as well as a long, sloping forehead, broad brows, a big mouth, and wrinkled cheeks. She is also known to have long, sharp claws and equally sharp fangs, and is terribly hostile to those that are unfortunate enough to meet her. Tales tell of her trying to sink ships and boats by clawing holes in the hull, or simply dragging the boats down into the depths of her watery lair. A tale from northern Norway tells of a possible encounter with one of the merfolk, had by a man named Pedder. He was rowing his small boat across the fjord when he passed a skerry, a tiny island or rock formation that breaks the surface of the water. As he passed, he started to hear a tiny voice whimpering and whining. He changed course and pulled his boat up onto the small island, where he saw a young baby laying on the ground, squirming. Now, at this time, it was no longer common practice to outcast babies that may have been sick or weak, and he found it sickening that anyone would do such a thing. He took it in his arms, wrapping it up snugly in his warm woolen shirt, and placed it safely in his boat, and began to row back home. Halfway to the shore in the deepest part of the sea, he heard a splash and looked to see the creature had disappeared. He looked around, searching for the child, afraid that it would drown. But instead, he heard a voice that whispered, Thank you to the man whose shirt he gave. Row in now. Row in to land. Water beings have been told as both friend and foe and the merfolk are no different, with the power to either curse those who wrong them, or help those who show them kindness. Tales of the men and women of the ocean date back centuries, some as old as the seas and lakes themselves. They can be benevolent and beautiful, or hostile and hideous, so proceed with care you may be lucky enough to glimpse the sparkle of an elegant fishtail or golden mess of hair beneath the surface. But beware, for such creatures can also have claws. This was the 14th installment of Tales from the North, a series on Nordic folklore, myths, and legends. This series is written and created by me, Equinox, and you can find credits below in the description. Thanks for watching, I'll be back next week with a new video introducing and exploring the magical world of Nordic folklore.